These aren't CGI. These are real images of Jupiter. And they're so stunning. People are refusing to believe they're authentic. Jupiter used to be just a colorful blur in science books, a giant ball of gas, too far to touch and too mysterious to fully understand. But that's changing fast. Right now, we're witnessing the most detailed, most stunning, and most unbelievable real images of Jupiter ever captured. Pictures so sharp, they almost don't look real. And no, this isn't CGI. These are actual photographs, some taken just weeks ago by NASA's Juno spacecraft as it dives past the gas giant in its wild elliptical orbit. Others were captured by telescopes like the James Webb and Hubble, teaming up to scan Jupiter in infrared, ultraviolet, and visible light all at once. And some of the most beautiful shots, they were stitched together by regular people, citizen scientists, processing raw NASA data, and turning it into planetary art. But here's the weird part. As we zoom in closer, things only get more confusing. Jupiter's clouds are doing things we didn't expect. Its famous great red spot is shrinking, and not just slowly. Massive storms are forming and disappearing in days. And deep inside its atmosphere, there are hints that Jupiter may have a hidden core stranger than any planet we've ever studied. This isn't just a bunch of pretty pictures. These images are changing how we understand planets, storms, moons, even the early days of our own solar system. So, let's take a deep dive, not just into the most jaw-dropping images, but into what they're really telling us about this colossal world. What are we really seeing? And what secrets is Jupiter still keeping behind those swirling clouds? Jupiter like you've never seen it before. Music, what used to be a blurry mix of brown and red bands is now a canvas of deep blues, pale pinks, icy whites, and stormy grays. Some of them look like marble, Others like ocean waves frozen mid-motion, but all of them are real, and they're coming straight from the edge of space. Most of these images come from Juno Cam, the camera aboard NASA's Juno spacecraft. It wasn't even designed for hardcore science. It was just supposed to give us some nice pictures for the public. But what happened next surprised everyone. People around the world started downloading the raw image files and processing them on their own. Artists, scientists, programmers, they all jumped in. And what they've been creating with that raw data looks like fine art that just happens to come from 500 million miles away. One photo shows a massive cyclone that looks like a hurricane on steroids, except it's the size of Earth. Another captures a cluster of smaller storms swirling like petals in a flower. And some of the cloud patterns are so detailed they show shadows from different layers of Jupiter's atmosphere. You can literally see depth in a planet made almost entirely of gas. And these aren't isolated moments. Juno has been flying by Jupiter since 2016. But the recent images are getting better with every pass. Why? Because Juno's orbit is gradually bringing it closer and closer during each flyby. That means higher resolution, more detail, and better lighting angles. Sometimes you can even catch sunlight just grazing across the edge of a storm, like a sunset on Earth. But over a place where it rains ammonia, the craziest part, we're seeing things that nobody expected. Strange bright spots, new storm systems, tornado-like features twisting around the poles, and a layer of haze high above the clouds that changes color under different light. This isn't just photography. It's like we're finally seeing the personality of Jupiter. A living, moving, shape-shifting world that's more complex than we thought. It doesn't just spin, it breathes. And for the first time, it's not hiding that from us anymore. But as beautiful as the planet looks from above, things get even weirder when Juno starts flying low, close enough to make out every wrinkle in Jupiter's stormy face. Juno's stunning new flyby reveals the most recent flybys from Juno weren't just lucky shots. They were planned dives timed precisely to pass within a few thousand km of Jupiter's cloud tops. That's basically scraping the edge of a planet made of storm. And what Juno saw on those passes, it's the kind of stuff you expect from science fiction, not real-life space exploration. Take the Great Red Spot. It's been raging for at least 300 years, maybe longer. But now, for the first time, we're getting real high-resolution images that show just how complex it actually is. The Red Spot isn't just a storm. It's a layered monster. Think of it like a storm inside a storm, spinning within deeper currents, almost like it's anchored below the clouds. Juno's latest images show fine structures, ridges, swirls, even smaller vortices being eaten alive by the larger storm. 
It's like watching a giant eye blink slowly as smaller clouds get pulled into it and disappear. Even more strange, the red spot is getting smaller. That's not new, but now we can track how fast it's happening. It's shrinking in width, but getting taller vertically, like a storm turning into a skyscraper. That's something we didn't predict. The mechanics of that behavior are still a mystery. Juno also flew over Jupiter's North Pole. And if you've never seen it, it doesn't look anything like the Jupiter you know. Up there, storms don't swirl in neat bands. They clump together into massive polygonal arrangements. There are literally six, seven, sometimes eight storms all spinning around a central vortex, each one perfectly spaced like petals around a center. Scientists call them circumpolar cyclones, and they stay locked in place like they're frozen in a dance. But they're not frozen. They're raging hurricanes bigger than Texas, spinning for years, and still holding formation like some kind of atmospheric ritual. And between these massive formations, deep blue voids, regions that seem calmer but may hide faster, denser flows underneath. No other planet has anything like this. Not even close. During one of the more recent passes, Juno even caught brief glimpses of fast-moving high-altitude jet streams. These jets were invisible to previous spacecraft, but now they're showing up as streaks cutting across cloud bands like scars. Evidence that Jupiter's atmosphere is layered in ways we barely understand. And here's the twist. Many of the best images weren't even expected. Juno wasn't designed for long-term imaging, and it wasn't expected to survive this many orbits, but it did, and it's still going. With each orbit, Juno keeps getting better shots, closer data, and more surprising results. Io's volcanic fury captured in action just when you thought Jupiter couldn't get any stranger. Its moon, Io, steps in and completely steals the show. Io isn't like our moon. It's alive, not with plants or oceans or cities, but with volcanoes. Hundreds of them. Some of them are constantly erupting. And now, for the first time in over 20 years, we're finally seeing them up close again, thanks to Juno. During its recent flybys, Juno adjusted its path to swing past Io multiple times. And what it caught on camera looks unreal. Giant plumes of material erupting straight into space. Lava lakes glowing faintly along the surface. Entire regions scarred and blackened by past eruptions. It's like watching a planet-sized fireworks show, but more violent and without a single moment of rest. In one of the clearest shots, you can actually see a volcanic plume rising above the edge of Io's horizon, backlit by the sun. It looks like a fountain of ash reaching hundreds of kilometers into the sky. And all of this is happening on a moon only about the size of Earth's moon, but constantly stretched and squeezed by Jupiter's gravity until its insides boil. That's the reason for the chaos. Io orbits so close to Jupiter and experiences such intense gravitational tugging that its crust is literally kneaded like dough. This constant flexing heats the interior, melts rock, and keeps the volcanic systems alive. In fact, Io is the most volcanically active object in the entire solar system. And here's what makes these new images so valuable. They don't just show eruptions. They show how Io's surface changes over time. Between flybys, scientists have started to track new lava flows, shape changes in volcano craters, and shifts in the thermal glow of the moon's hottest spots. One region that looked flat and calm a few months ago is now coated in dark, fresh volcanic deposits. We're literally watching geology in motion on a world where the ground never rests. But the story goes deeper than surface fireworks. These eruptions are injecting material into Jupiter's magnetic environment. Sulfur and plasma from Io's volcanoes actually become part of Jupiter's radiation belts. That's right. This tiny moon is helping fuel the largest planetary magnetosphere in the solar system. And the interaction isn't one way. Juno's instruments detected magnetic field disturbances and particle flows around Io that seem to shift depending on volcanic activity. That means Jupiter and Io are locked in a strange violent relationship where every eruption feeds energy into space and every orbit twists the moon a little more. These aren't just cool pictures. They're a glimpse into an alien world that's tearing itself apart from the inside. And the closer we look, the more we realize Io isn't the exception. It might be the key to understanding Jupiter's entire system. The eyes in space. JWSD and Hubble's view of Jupiter, while Juno gives us those dramatic up-close shots of Jupiter's storms and surface chaos, 
it's not working alone. Thousands of kilometers away, two of the most powerful telescopes ever built, Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope, have been quietly watching Jupiter from a different angle. And what they're seeing is just as strange. The James Webb Space Telescope, for example, turned its infrared sensors toward Jupiter. What it captured was something no human had ever seen before. A high-speed jet stream blasting through the equator of the planet at more than 500 kilometers per hour. The jet sits above the main cloud layers and moves so fast that it looks like a blur even in long exposure images. It's like a secret river of wind flowing across the top of the planet's atmosphere. Totally invisible, invisible light. At the same time, Webb picked up surprising heat signatures from deep within Jupiter's atmosphere. In some zones, the heat appears to rise from beneath massive storm systems, suggesting there's more vertical movement in the planet's interior than we previously understood. And in the polar regions, Webb's infrared eyes revealed glowing auroras, just like the northern lights on Earth, but stretched into massive, violent rings of energy powered by Jupiter's intense magnetic field. Then there's Hubble. It's been watching Jupiter for years, but it's still contributing. In visible and ultraviolet light, Hubble has been tracking long-term changes, storm evolution, cloud movements, shifts in color patterns. It sees the big picture while Juno gets close. And when their data is compared side by side, you start to see things that neither telescope could have revealed on its own. Some storms, for example, look tame in Hubble's wide shots, but up close, Juno shows them twisting and folding like giant whirlpools. Other times, Webb will detect a heat anomaly. And then Juno flies over the same region and finds something physically forming in the clouds, a rising tower, a new vortex, a fresh cluster of turbulence. This collaboration between missions wasn't even part of the original plan. But the discoveries coming from it are changing how we think about Jupiter's weather, interior structure, and even its influence on nearby space. We're getting a full picture from the sharp surface textures to the boiling depths to the cold, fast-moving jets in the upper atmosphere. Jupiter isn't just a giant ball of gas. It's layered, active, and constantly shifting. And with these combined views from Juno, Webb, and Hubble, we're finally seeing it as a real dynamic world. Not just a distant dot in the sky, but a system with depth, motion, and mystery. And this view is only the beginning because there are two new missions already on their way to Jupiter right now. Missions that won't just take pictures, but will explore its moons, its ocean worlds, and its secrets buried beneath the ice. The missions that are going to change everything right now. Two spacecraft are hurtling toward Jupiter. And they're not going there just to look at the planet. They're going to dive into its moons, search for oceans, scan for signs of life, and do the kind of science that could redefine how we see our own solar system. The first is JUICE, short for Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. It's a European Space Agency mission that launched in 2023. It's not expected to arrive at Jupiter until 2031, but when it does, it's going to focus on three of Jupiter's most fascinating moons, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. These aren't just icy rocks orbiting a gas giant. All three of them are believed to have subsurface oceans, liquid water trapped beneath kilometers of frozen crust. And JUICE is bringing radar, spectrometers, altimeters, and a magnetometer to figure out just how deep, how salty, and how alive those oceans might be. It'll be the first spacecraft in history to orbit another moon besides our own. That moon is Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. It's bigger than Mercury and it's the only moon we know of with its own magnetic field. What's inside it? Why is it magnetic? What's lurking under all that ice? Juice is going to find out. Then there's Europa Clipper, NASA's flagship mission to one of the most exciting places in the solar system, Europa. It launched in October 2024 and is expected to reach Jupiter by 2030. Once it's there, it will perform dozens of flybys of Europa, scanning its icy surface with radar, sniffing for chemical signatures in the thin atmosphere, and maybe even detecting geysers shooting out from cracks in the ice. Europa is considered one of the best places to look for alien life in our solar system. Not just because it has water, but because it has active water. The gravitational pull from Jupiter stretches and heats Europa's interior, creating the conditions that could support life beneath the surface. And Europa Clipper is being sent there to get as close as possible without actually landing. 
What makes these missions special is that they're building on everything we're seeing now. Juno gave us close-up shots. Webb and Hubble gave us the big picture. But Juice and Clipper are going deeper, literally. They're going to study the stuff that's hiding beneath the beauty, the hidden oceans, the chemistry, the energy sources. And once they arrive, they'll be adding even more layers to the already massive archive of Jupiter system data. For the first time, we'll have simultaneous science coming in from orbiters around the planet, telescopes watching from deep space, and probes diving into the ice around its moons. The Jupiter system is about to become the most explored, most studied, and possibly most surprising part of our entire solar system. And all of it, every image, every flyby, every radar scan is bringing us closer to understanding not just a planet, but a whole miniature solar system orbiting one giant world. What the images are actually telling us all these stunning images might seem like eye candy, but they're doing a lot more than just looking pretty. Every swirl, every color gradient, every oddly shaped storm is a clue, a data point a puzzle piece in something much bigger. And when scientists analyze these images, they're learning things that textbooks never covered. Let's start with Jupiter's atmosphere. Before Juno, we thought the weather was mostly skin deep, just surface level chaos. But now with Juno's microwave radiometer and those high resolution photos, we know the storms go deep. Some of them sink hundreds of kilometers into the atmosphere, pulling heat and chemicals down with them. That changes everything about how we model gas giants. Jupiter's storms aren't just swirling gas. They're vertical towers, more like weather systems on Earth than anyone expected. Then there's the Great Red Spot. From the outside, it just looks like a big red oval. But with detailed tracking from Hubble, Juno, and Webb, scientists have discovered it's shrinking, but also getting taller. That means the energy driving it might be changing possibly transferring power deeper into the planet or across the atmosphere in new ways. The colors in the images, they're not just for show. Different hues reflect different chemicals. Some areas are rich in ammonia, others in sulfur or phosphine. And when you track how those colors shift over time, you can actually watch chemicals moving through Jupiter's jet streams, like following smoke across a storm. Then there's the magnetosphere. Jupiter has the strongest magnetic field of any planet in the solar system, 20,000 times stronger than Earth's. And Juno's data combined with the shape of auroras captured by Hubble and Webb is revealing strange variations in that magnetic field. It's not symmetrical, it's lopsided. And the field lines dive deep into the planet, suggesting there's something unusual going on inside. Maybe even an unexpected type of core or liquid metallic hydrogen behaving in a way we don't fully understand. Io's volcanic eruptions. Those aren't just geological events. They're reshaping Jupiter's environment. When Io erupts, it sprays sulfur and sodium into space, feeding the planet's radiation belts and creating glowing clouds of plasma that wrap around the entire planet. In some Juno images, you can actually see traces of these glowing tori. Faint, but definitely there and those mysterious high-altitude jet streams discovered by Webb. They don't just move fast. They might be connected to deep atmospheric layers that we never thought existed. It's like finding an entirely new weather system sitting above all the others. Together, these discoveries are building a more complete and far more complicated picture of Jupiter. It's not just a ball of gas. It's layered, dynamic, and full of internal feedback systems. Storms rise and fall. Gases cycle through bands and plumes. Magnetic fields twist and pulse. It's a living machine running on physics we're only just starting to decode. And that's what makes these images so powerful. They're not just snapshots. They're evidence of motion, of depth, of processes happening in real time on a world that's still hiding countless secrets. Once you see what NASA's cameras captured, you'll understand why the internet thinks Jupiter looks too wild to be real. Hit that subscribe button, share your thoughts below, and let's keep exploring the together. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next.